Hello and welcome to another Factorio base tour. I'm Exterminator and thank you so much for joining me today and I am very excited to be back doing another one of these and uh, this one is pretty awesome. We've seen another base somewhat like this before uh, but this one I think takes it potentially to an even bigger scale. Uh, so this is a base submitted to me by Imp uh, probably about a month ago and uh, due to the queued up bases I had I'm only just now getting to it um, so sorry for the delay but I'm uh, very happy to be here so this is to start off uh, we'll just cover the basics this is a vanilla uh, about 6.1k a little over 6k science per minute uh, mega base and uh, there's a couple of very interesting strategies used here. Uh, now the primary strategy used is something we've seen only once before and I was very fascinated by the concept and or maybe we've seen it twice, a couple times before. I think we've only seen it once though. Uh, and I, I really want to explore in that a lot in this video because I think it's a, a very good way of doing things. Uh, and then there's a other, couple other cool things uh, to look at as well here too. So. Uh, this is vanilla. They did use a uh, max rate calculator, which doesn't really change anything. It just helps you figure out ratios and stuff. Um, and then they had editor extensions um, installed, but I've run it without it and it's working fine. So it's not required to actually run the base um, unless there's some like massive amount of buffers or something that's keeping this going. But I've been having it run for quite a few minutes here and it seems to be fine. Um, it does run at 60 UPS with uh, some... Uh, space to go up as well. We're at about 12 update time. We can go up to about 15 before we start dropping below 60 UPS. And uh, yeah, let's just look at the production first off. So if we look in the last minute here, uh, we can see Yellow Science is actually kind of overbuilt a bit, um, doing 7.7k. Um, and then the rest uh, are doing around 6 or a little over 6k in green science is down quite a bit. I don't know if that's due to a production issue or a large backlog. We will take a look at that here when we look at the base itself. And then uh, we can look at all time here just to get a general idea. Uh, quite large numbers here, over 2 billion iron, uh, 1.7 billion copper, a billion green circuits, almost half a billion plastic, almost a quarter billion, but well, actually a little more than quarter billion um, red circuits so this base has been running for a long time and i mean just the general uh amount of production needed for like a 6k plus science per minute base is quite large as well so uh what really stands out to me is the billion circuits like this is huge <laughs> you know you think the 20 million circuit achievement is large this is obviously massive this is like what like over 10 times i want to say like 50 times that or something math um so Let's actually take a look at the base. So we start out here and we're starting off in the kind of make everything. Uh, they call this a mini base is, is what this is labeled as a mini base here. Um, so it has some basic delivery of all the all the main materials, coal, copper, iron, stone brick, stone and steel. And then we just have a very simple type of main bus here. There is one rocket uh, silo. The science is cut off. Um, this was maybe kind of the starter base or they just built this uh, maybe this isn't the starter base, but it was kind of their next step after the starter base they did to um, launch a couple rockets or so, because uh, obviously they don't need this to maintain science anymore. Uh, and then we have uh, the actual kind of hub or mall uh, here, making all the main stuff they would need, all late game stuff, of course, you know, inserters, uh, belts and such, but then just a lot of like modules, um, assembler level threes, electric furnaces, beacons, etc., etc. all the basic stuff you would need for a mega base. Uh, so I'm not going to spend too much time here. It's a very, very straightforward main bus system here. Uh, and there is science, but from what I can tell, it's not really being used at the moment. Um, you can see these labs are not working um, because obviously we're doing something that requires space science, quite a lot of it, I might add, and uh, mining prod 169, holy cow and uh, they've cut off space science to turn these off, I'd imagine. So uh, this is not the main science area. Uh, and then the delivery here is just done uh, with pretty simple uh, two, four, six, uh, two, eight trains, single headed. And all the delivery and stuff for them is here. Um, some smelting at the outposts here, pretty straightforward. Again, I'm not really gonna spend much time at this because we'll look more in depth on the main production area. So uh, from here, when we go down, uh, we have a large module production area, which is not surprising. We definitely need a ton of modules. Um, I see 
obviously a lot of speed threes. In fact, there's one, two, three, four machines making level threes, which is quite a lot. Um, I don't see productivity. So they either did that somewhere else or maybe didn't use productivity. I, I, fingers crossed it's not the case, um, but we will look when we go look at the other builds. Um, so here's the module production, everything contained here. You can see the oil processing here, all that stuff, um, all the resources for it, and then just the pickup. Uh, now, if we go right, there is a gigantic, and I mean gigantic, solar field. Um, this here is, okay, all the production for the solar, so solar and uh, accumulators here. If we look in the storage, there's actually not that uh, that many stored. They probably maybe have it capped, potentially. Um, but, I mean, there's a ton on the belt, obviously. These belts run all the way through. is quite, quite a lot. Um, so... There's all that, and then this solar field just stretches for a very long way, and there's a set of rails running through the middle to traverse it, and then obviously expand it. Uh, in the notes they gave me, they'd say they started off with nuclear, uh, like massive nuclear builds, but decided to go solar for UPS reasons, which is good. Um, I'm not sure if we would be below 60 UPS or not, uh, if, if it were still on nuclear. If we look at the power production, I would say so. We would be below 60, considering there's 71 gigawatts of power being consumed. Um, Creating that much power with nuclear is not difficult, but it does require quite a lot of it, and that is a lot of UPS strain. Um, even if you build very efficiently, it just is due to flu boxes and everything else required in nuclear setups, where solar basically just counts as nothing um, UPS-wise. Um, so let's see here, over a million solar panels to do this. Four steam engines doing nothing. Um, and then almost a million accumulators. Like this is pretty ridiculous. This is one of the highest power consumptions I've seen in, in a base I've looked at before. Um, I've seen a couple higher, but usually it's not this high. Like this is a, a very large amount of power. Uh, and you can see, you know, a lot of that is, well, right now a lot of it's charging accumulators. So without it, it's still almost 50 gigawatts. Um, without the accumulator charge. We have over 50,000 beacons, which is just insane by itself. Over 3,000 assemblers, 6,000 furnaces, um, 222, or sorry, 220 refineries, 500 chemical plants, so on and so forth. Pretty basic, actually, not very much stuff showing here. Um, so then, uh, we can look in the Spidertron. Um, we can basically look at everything in map view for the most part. So then if we go to the left, um, we have fuel production here. Uh, which is a nice, very simple, straightforward, just pulling straight from uranium patch here to create uh, nuclear fuel. Tons and tons of it. This actually looks really cool on the belt. Coming over, over to here where it's picked up and then brought to all the different fuel stations. Um, and you can see they just label it based, uh, they use the icons, which is really nice. So you can see fuel station purple, one, two, green, and then blue, one, two, so on and so forth which is uh, really nice. Um, so trains with this stuff, so there's 10 fuel trains, it looks like. Definitely maybe need more than one. I, I feel like you can maybe get away with one, uh, although with the amount of trains, there's, I think, quite a few. There's 260 trains. Um, I would say maybe more than one would be good. I don't know if 10 is necessary, but I mean, it doesn't hurt anything. And then we have nuclear power plant, which is gone at this point. Like I said, they took it down for uh, solar, but it looks like this is where it was. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, some kind of remains of mining here for that. And then as we continue to the left, um, we will notice that the patches are pretty large and fairly rich, not insanely rich, aside from the, well, the oil is pretty ridiculous. They maybe bumped oil up 17, almost 18,000 percent there. Um, but when you have this level of mining productivity, you know, if we look at this, uh, they have 1610% mining productivity, which, you know, for anyone who doesn't know how this works, um, basically means that if we take a look at a patch, um, that's say 100 mil, um, it's going to be 16 times that. Um, so like 1.6 billion output, um, because you're getting this much mining productivity from it. So it doesn't really matter. Like these could even still be probably like 20 million and he'd, and he'd still be fine. Um, so let's start off, uh, let's start off with red. Let's just go up kind of chronologically with the science packs. So the strategy I referred to initially that this base uses that I've only seen, I think once or twice before, um, is the fact that it uses all or, or mostly um, like dedicated surrogated rail systems and mining. 
Um, so while the rails do seem to connect here, because they kind of need to, to at least get to the labs and stuff, um, and maybe carry some resources, all the mining for things, as far as I can tell, is local. And that's what they said in their notes as well. So you can see that copper and iron, which is the only two things you need for red science, are right here, and uh, they do not go on the main line. They are purely, they are actually separate. You can see this goes down here and goes up to here, and this is in no way whatsoever connected to the main line. So the only way this is actually connected to the main line is for the science to be taken out and brought to the labs and for the fuel to come in. And this, I think, is the case on all the science. And this is a system that works really, really well. In my Mega Base tutorial series, um, I mentioned a strategy like this, and, and I use something very much like this in my si uh, sending supporters to space Mega Base um, that I built quite a long time ago. Um, we're keeping your raw resources separate, like separate rail network wise, um, it is a huge help because it just takes so many trains off the main network, it prevents a lot of jams. Um, in some cases, it can be easier to work with. Um, logistically, sometimes it can be harder, but they've managed to do it quite well here. Uh, so if we come over, again, uh, so these are two, four, six, eight, so two, eight trains, uh, obviously on nuclear fuel to locomotives, I think is plenty here. And uh, they pull through, obviously there's no locomotive on the back and they unload. Uh, all this is belt based from what I can tell. Um, so we have three blue belts of copper coming in, three blue belts of iron. Um, obviously we're unloading, they're unloading far more than this using some uh, filter priority splitting here. Uh, but they're just turning it into three belts, I think just because that's the only, like they only need this much smelting for red science. It's really simple and not very expensive. Uh, and, and they are luckily using productivity models and everything. So I'm not sure, maybe as we continue to look, I just cannot find the productivity model production, um, but I'm sure maybe we'll see it as we pass over stuff. Um, so they are doing that, which is really good. Uh, and then they just have three smelting columns, pretty straightforward. I think we've seen a smelter set up like this before multiple times, very similar. Um, where the ore comes along one side here, and then uh, it side loads for, so this thing that's actually different, um, which I like, is instead of doing like half of the smelting, like the first half going on one side of the belt, and then the second half going on the other side of the belt, and doing like kind of a weird merge thing or something, like I might do, um, they're just doing every other, they're alternating. So this one inserts on the top, next one inserts on the bottom, next one on top, next one on the bottom, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, it, it actually makes for a very clean look, doesn't require some weird merge at the end, um, and uh, just works really well, just utilizing side loading perfectly, and then undergrounding here very nicely. And uh, it comes over, and then outputs here, and then this one, this last one, because uh, I would imagine, I think this is an odd number, so if we take this, um, yeah, so it's nine. So it's four on one side, four on the other, alternating, and then the last one, they insert out both sides to then merge. Now this won't be perfect, just due to how inserters, um, the inserters aren't gonna equally grab, like the inserters won't alternate necessarily, um, but it's close enough, it certainly is working, um, and this is a pretty good way to do it, all things considered, so. Very well done there. Comes over, uh, Red Science is made here, and the gears for Red Science uh, are made over on this right side, because that's where the iron smelting is, same exact setup, not really gonna look too in depth at that, same as the copper, except for iron. And uh, we're making the gears here. Uh, there is eight assemblers doing it. And then again, side loading, using side loading a lot here, which I really like. And then this, okay, interesting. So, um, I feel like I'm missing something here. So this is a double copper line, so meaning copper on both lanes. It comes over and then it side loads onto this to only put it on one side of the belt. I think I'm missing something for this, but I don't really understand the reason for this. Um, I'm sure there is one, uh, but this is the last one in the line and this doesn't like go anywhere else. And since it's not a combined belt of like copper and some other thing, I don't know why they do this when, when they could just make this a normal belt. And, and have the inserter grab from that, unless it has something to do with the inserter working better this way that I'm not aware of, which is entirely possible. Like, it's, it's very possible I'm wrong. Uh, please, in the comments, let me know, um, or, or Imp, if you see this, uh, let me know what the reason for this is, because I'm really curious. I'm sure you had a reason, and I I'm really curious what it is, because I can't really think of one to do it this way, opposed from just having a normal belt right here to grab from. Um, so I I'm very curious on that, actually. Uh, but otherwise, really good outputting all the science, which also goes into, <laughs> um, now this is interesting. 
This is actually a bigger train, which is kind of ridiculous um, in the best way possible. So this is a two wagon and uh, gee, this is a lot. This is a two wagon, six, sorry, two locomotive on front, 16 wagon train and then two locos on the back um, still facing the same direction. So kind of just pushing as the others pull. Um, so total four locomotives, 16 wagon science train. This holds an absurd amount of science, like ridiculous amount of science because science stacks in 200s, if you remember. Um, so it pulls out this way and then goes up and it's kind of just create and then comes back in this way. Um, so this goes up and then goes where it needs to off to the labs. And that's red science. If we go up here directly from it, we have green science, same exact setup for the loading of the train again. Uh, going to be a 416 um, setup here, which is just an absurd amount of science, and I love it. Um, and then uh, smelting, again, not really going to look in depth on these, because from what I can tell, they're all the same. The side loading with the alternation going on here. Uh, again, though, taking note that all the mining is purely for this. It's all separate, segregated for this build specifically. The iron and copper here, again, which is all you need for green science, is just mine directly right here they built it by the patches and it never connects to any other part of the network um, which is super super nice so this comes in um, this is actually a left hand drive system because uh, the trains go uh, north on the left lane and then go south on the right lane um, so these come in uh, park and then just pull back out pretty straightforward easy uh, there is a, a four-way intersection here um, since you know for the both trains to go kind of where they need to. Um, it's not really an issue like at all. It's kind of funny. It's, it's kind of almost overkill considering there's literally only two uh, patches here. Um, but I do like it because it allows for expandability and just allows the trains to go exactly where they need to without limitation. Um, you know, and you can see they've built this out in case, you know, there's like another copper and iron right here if they need to expand it eventually. Um, so very well done thinking in the future. Um, now, one thing I just noticed is that these iron trains are actually bigger than the copper trains. Um, it, so it requires more uh, iron, and, and they're doing bigger trains here. So uh, they're doing two twelve twos here, opposed to just the two eights, which is interesting. And you can see, obviously, more lanes of iron here. Um, now, some of these aren't being used, but uh, it looks like if we take this here... So it looks like 12 lanes that are actually being used right here of iron and then just two lanes of copper actually um and then this comes over you can see the finished plate here uh, making circuits and then you need all the iron for the gears right you make a you make a lot of gears for the inserters and the belts um so we have the inserters being made here which are output on this half of the belt uh and then this comes over and going over and then the belt is made on the opposite side and actually goes through the middle here undergrounding very nicely this is a nice trick um i like to do just undergrounding and then pulling directly from it there and that is green science pretty straightforward pretty simple um very well done on that uh, as we move over to the left we then move into blue science which as you might imagine is quite a lot larger and again everything self uh you know self-contained uh blue science the science is here same exact deal with the train setup for the loading the blue science train size um and being separate uh and then all of the mining which does stretch out farther obviously blue science requires a lot more resources um here's copper here's iron here's another iron um and this looks like even more iron and they have labeled it which is really nice as well so you can see blue science iron mine one blue science copper mine one through two one through one etc um, and then coal, of course, and then oil, I would assume, potentially. Uh, here's some oil. So it's actually not trained in, it's just piped in. Um, tons and tons of pipes worth, multiple of uh, four, uh, actually five oil pipes with a, with a water pipe stuck in there. Um, so we have the oil set up here using absolute max beacons on this oil. Uh, you can see here this has effect sources 19, three of those being the modules inside. So there's actually 16 beacons here, which I believe is the max you can do for oil refineries. Um, basically the 12 beacon setup, but for refineries. Um, and then uh, the chemical plants, the same, prod modging everything, which is great. Uh, producing the sulfur, one lane, which is then split into a bunch of different lanes, just so it can be kind of sent to all the different places it needs to go. Um, 
being just the science modules here. It can come down. And then the plastic is made obviously here and just goes directly into the red circuits, which goes straight through the middle. And then the red circuits are actually, this is interesting. So the red circuits um, output onto half the engine belt here. And the engine belt is then actually running vertically uh, through here because the engines are made above it. So there was definitely some thought that went into this to arrange things um, in such a way where they didn't have to do like a bunch of different belts then like merging into each other to get them to go where they want or like offsetting stuff a bunch. Um, obviously these belts have to move over a couple tiles, but overall um, this is really good and, and the assemblers all line up. It looks really nice. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of thought and planning I think went into this. Uh, which does go into most mega bases, but it's just really nice to see here how how well they made this work, um, layout wise and functionality wise as well. Um, so then the engines and red circuits come down through here, and the sulfur just crosses, and that's everything you need for blue science. And then those again, same deal as the smelters and the fact that they're just alternating. So one goes on one half the belt, the next one down goes on the other side of the belt, uh, which all come down and just go into their own chests here and await for a train to show up. And then of course fuel and a second fuel. Uh, so there's blue science. Next up is purple science, which is gonna be down here. <laughs> well, part of it, part, uh, purple science is down here directly below blue science. So nicely arranged as well. Um, and these, you can see these blocks of, of production are starting to get larger and larger as we continue on. Uh, so purple science, same deal with the science. Um, again, worth pointing out because I just really like it. Same deal with all of the like separated smelt, uh, separated um, mining and stuff purely for this. Uh, you can see this one almost looks like it connects, but it doesn't. It's just the patch is very close to this area. Uh, and this you can see needs a lot of stuff. Uh, we we can see uh, iron mine. 7-1 and 2 and then I mean this comes all the way down here for the stone um, that was space science and then this comes all the way over here so they stretched out and this is really nice because you can just keep stretching out they could branch off another line to hit this one there's more iron here if they need it they could keep going down if they want even richer stuff um, so this kind of just you know sends out the fingers of rail if you will out and uh, and pulls the resources from where they need to go and then, uh, now it's not direct mining into train, which is interesting. At this level of mining productivity, you could absolutely do that. Uh, but they probably didn't want to tear things up and redo it. And this certainly works. Um, definitely have a beast of a balancer right here. Um, I think this is, uh, well, there's 10 lanes here. So, but then there's ones aren't that aren't utilized. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So this is like a 16 by 16 balancer, I believe. Um, and then pretty large uh, copper trains here. So this is actually a 210. So there are diff uh, varying sizes of trains. We see the 28s, the 210s, the like 216.2s, the 212s. I think it was on those irons or 212.2s. Um, so definitely a lot of varying stuff. And they come in here, pull into these stackers. Like, so this is another example. This is a, well, yet another train size, 214.2 for some of the iron. Um, and then interesting, smaller uh, here, uh, just a 2.8 for other parts of the iron. I would imagine um, this is going to maybe a different part. So yeah, this one pulls in here. The short ones come in here, which then go to this part of smelting. And then this gigantic thing, which I think is two 16 by 16 balancers worth, comes in over here and all the way over... Um, you can see, so this uh, this comes here, and then each one is just branching off. So this one turns, this one turns, and slowly getting smaller and smaller and smaller all the way over. Um, and then copper goes the opposite direction. Um, so we have iron here, and then copper is actually above it. So they're running the copper all the way through the iron smelting, which is pretty interesting. I wouldn't have really expected that. Um, and, and it's it's almost encompassing the rest of the stuff. So it's kind of confusing to look at, but if we look at it from the map view where all the labels are, uh, we can see that iron is kind of on the edge here. And then within that is the copper this that surrounds the circuit. So it's actually kind of a, you know, a tiered thing, if you will, going from the border inwards. Uh, and then we have the uh, oil production here, nothing 
like super crazy, very straightforward, simple, which is good in this case. Simpler the better with oil. Um, and then of course, direct insertion with the cable to green circuits, it's basically a one-to-one -one ratio, again, with the full productivity model and beacon. Um, now these are a beacon. Um, it didn't really look like it at first, but or, no, sorry, 10 beacon. So these are 10 beacon um, because yeah, there's the four modules and it's, yeah. Um, so, and then this one here is 12 beacon and the cable for this just goes to red circuits. So again, this is kind of confusing to look at, doing a lot of undergrounding. So the green circuits are made, undergrounds right here, all the way underneath to right here, which then goes up along the left side for the red circuits. And then the cable just underground straight out and goes up to the red circuits here and then through the middle. Essentially, it is, is how this um, is set up, um, which is really, uh, really quite good. Takes good use of space. And then the plastic... Uh, it seems to be on its own half belt here, just made very locally, like right next to, each, uh, to it, and then sent up the right side. And then the red circuits are output um, above here, and it looks like just going on one side, but they may alternate later on. Um, so they're actually sideloading both onto the same side, um, and then they have more coming from uh, another section here that then loads onto a full belt. So they have three full blue belts of red circuits here. This is a ton of red circuits. Oh, my mistake. <laughs> they actually have a lot more than that. Uh, they have six blue belts of red circuits here. And I mean, if we look at the production, you know, they are making 48,000 red circuits a minute, which is pretty ridiculous. Uh, and then these come over, some go along with green circuits to make the prod module once, and then some come over to go to the electric furnaces. And I think we kind of have to look at the rail um, before we do that, though, I want to look at the steel because it's the first bit of steel we've looked at. So, um, the, the iron smelting is done within it. It takes ore, smelts the iron, and then, uh, inserts through a box into the, uh, steel. Now I find it interesting. They haven't capped these boxes. I don't think it's really an issue. Um, usually I would always cap the box, but I don't think it's much of a problem. It's just kind of a lot of iron sitting there. But the advantage is if the iron ever turns off, it would still allow steel to be smelted for quite a long time because there's, you know, almost 5K iron in there that could be turned into almost 1,000 steel, actually probably 1,000 with productivity. Um, so um, that's that's pretty nice there. Um, and that's 1,000 per smelter too. So if we come over, I, I like looking at the rail because rail is always so difficult to supply, especially at these high speeds. Um, a spin, they speed module the whole thing too. Obviously, they can't productivity it, but they, they could have not sped it up, but they did, and they went full speed, um, four, <laughs> 12 speed beacons with four speed modules in it. This thing is just cranking. Um, and you can see, so they're doing a half blue belt of stone and steel, uh, which I'm actually really surprised is enough, and then um, doing uh, the iron iron sticks, iron bars right here, the underground in. And you can see they just have a line of inserters. And one nice thing, this is a very, very smart thing they've done, which I actually never really thought of doing myself, even though it's very simple, I feel kind of dumb for not thinking of it, um, is they filtered the inserters, which is really smart. Um, because this is this is like guaranteeing that the right amount of each stuff is going to get inserted in here, because you don't filter them. Like I, normally, I wouldn't filter them. Um, until after seeing this, maybe, uh, is is if these were all just stack inserters, there may be like kind of an uneven amount. So it would like, maybe most of them would pick up stone and fill it up with stone. And then like they'd switch to doing iron and then it would go for some, but then like it would stop and they'd have to do stone again and would wait for more iron, for more steel to go in, if that makes sense. But by filtering it, they have two that will only do steel. These will always do steel. These two will always do stone. And then this last one, I guess, is left to just do whatever is needed. Um, this is a very, very smart uh, setup here to do this. And I think I'm going to start doing this if I can remember. Uh, because, I, I mean, I don't see this thing stopping. And they somehow, with this absurd amount of speed, managed to make this run fully, which to me is very impressive because it is just so difficult to supply rails at this level. And you can see on the right side how fast the materials are moving in and out of there. Um, and then they have three inserters. Um, sorry. Uh, the okay, actually interesting. So they have the sticks here, which are inserted here and then side loaded here. 
Um, again, I'm not sure why they didn't just take the bell and turn it inwards toward the inserter, because it wouldn't merge then. Uh, maybe aesthetic thing, or maybe somehow this works better. But anyway, um, so they have two inserters here outputting the rail on one side, and then three inserters outputting on the other side. Um, and, and these are just cranking. These are running full out, which is very, very good. Very cool. Um, if we look, making 43,000 rail a minute. <laughs> so that's pretty nuts. Uh, the blue or the purple science itself, rail comes in the, on the left, uh, electric furnaces on the bottom, and then the prod modules uh, coming through the middle here. And then same deal with science, nothing really different to look at there. And then the electric furnaces are pretty straightforward setup brick here on uh, one side, full belt of that, full belt of steel, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, a red circuit belt, uh, belt that runs under the middle to supply all of them in that row at least, in that column, sorry. So we have that, and then the stone um, is down here. Just a quick look at that. Um, nothing super crazy going on here, just stone on the right, alternating for the smelting like we've seen before, outputting the brick, and we have a lot of stone uh, brick. We have six blue belts, stone brick. Pretty cool to look at, actually. I really like how that looks. So there's purple. Very well done. Uh, moving over to high tech, which was up here, even bigger, massive. Um, so, uh, same kind of type of deal where the iron is here on like one corner, and then the copper is in here. Obviously, you need way more copper, um, and comes in, and then it kind of just surrounds the green circuits. This entire thing is actually copper, um, and then steel here with the iron mixed in it. Some more copper, some more iron, more copper, etc. Um, again, it's worth mentioning, all the uh, mining and resource gathering for yellow science is purely up here and only connected to yellow science. Never hits a main line or any other science lines. Just fantastic. It basically is foolproof for jams unless you really screw something up on these lines. Um, so it just helps things run so much smoother. Uh, now, you can see later on, as they progressed, they switched. So this now is actually direct train to mining, which is very interesting to me. Um, so everything up through purple science was was just belt, just smelting, or sorry, mining on the belt and then belting into the trains. Uh, and then they decided to switch and go purely uh, mining directly into trains. And I would imagine that just has to do with the level of technology they got to where they decided this was viable or maybe just changed their mind. Because um, I would imagine that uh, space science is not the same thing okay <laughs> space science is actually back to belt so that's really interesting um so out of everything uh yellow science is the only one that seems to do direct train to mining uh, maybe they just wanted to experiment with it uh i can't imagine that they built space science first but maybe they did um because you can kind of just take the, uh, the the way the desri did the science quite a long time ago is you can like take either purple science or high tech science, I believe, to space science. So maybe they did space science before yellow. I kind of doubt it, but um, anyway, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, so the trains here, again, different sizes. So the really large trains here, and then slightly smaller ones here. Uh, ton, just insane amount of lanes. I want to say this is probably 32 lanes. Yeah, 32 lanes of copper over there, even more in addition over here, 22 here. And uh, take a look, 16 here of iron, more over there. Uh, so this comes over, all this right here, all this production, which again, not going to look really in-depth about. It's it's very straightforward, um, utilizing double side loading here for the green circuits. And we've looked at all these builds basically before elsewhere. Um, and then they're actually, do, so they have some pure circuit build uh, belts and then some that are steel and circuits. Uh, and those come over. And this makes all, and then the batteries are made here locally. And this is all for the robot frames, uh, because that is an ingredient, of course. And those just come over and then go horizontal from right to left through the builds here on the, on the top above the assemblers, basically, um, for the robo frames. And then the red circuits uh, go through here. So all the red circuits are made, which I would imagine go to processing units. Um, so all the processing units are all the way over here on the left. So you can see the red circuits run through, run underneath all of this. A lot of kind of cross-pathing here. So like 
the plastic is made on the left and the red circuits cross under it. So things are just kind of going opposite directions, which is kind of interesting to look at. Um, blue si or blue circuits, a ton. Five blue belts of blue circuits. That's a lot of blue circuits. Um, and these pass through the middle. And then finally, the, the real doozy for yellow science is these low density structures. Um, and you can see this build is quite large. And I would imagine that a majority of the copper goes to this because they require obviously a ton of copper, requiring 20 copper plate per. Now, productivity module them, productivity moduling them helps quite a lot, um, but still kind of crazy how much copper it requires. So I, I would imagine, I think basically all this up here is all for, <laughs> all for low density structures. Um, <clears throat> And routing it through here is interesting. You can see just many, many belts routing through here to get them all to where they need to go. Using some merging here as well to kind of supplement where needed so things don't run out partway through. Uh, and then these output and then go along the side for yellow science. Same deal with the train. Again, kind of crazy to think how much yellow science fits in here with how expensive it is. And then last but certainly not least is the massive, massive space science section here. Um, this is by far the biggest, for sure. Um, Pearl Science is somewhat close, but by far the biggest section because um, they need to make low density structures again in mass, and they also need to make rocket fuel in mass, which we have in the middle here. Um, and then they also need to make the rocket control units in mass, which are up above here. Um, so all the mining, again, dedicated purely for this. We have many, many unloads and stackers, all very nicely labeled. So like uh, Space Science, Copper Drop-Off 3, Space Science, Iron Drop-Off 2, etc. Different sizes of trains, just like balancers after balancers, belt, massive belts, <laughs> uh, one after the other. Um, so <laughs> this is really funny. Um, is this, how many are we make? 188,000. So 10 minutes. 1.8 million. Uh, so yeah, we just got the 20 million circuit achievement, <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so all this comes over just a certain amount of lanes of copper and iron here, um, smelting here. So all of this comes over. These go up to make the green circuits and we have massive green circuit flow here coming up right alongside copper, which is very, very nice to look at um, and comes up and over uh, and merges into here to go to red circuits. Uh, which of course we use to then go just straight through. This is a kind of a cool intersection pass over here uh, that comes into blue circuits. Uh, we haven't looked at the blue circuit builds yet, uh, but you know they're very simple in, in their recipe. So we have multiple green circuit belts, unsurprising because blue circuits take an absurd amount. Um, so we have three green circuit belts passing through here. Not all of them are grabbed from at first. So like just this one on this here. This one is shared, or sorry. No, this one is just here. So this first line only supplies these two. And the next one supplies these two, I would imagine. And then the bottom one supplies the next two. And uh, some, <clears throat> excuse me, some speed modules as well. Then red circuits below that. So this all turns into rocket control units over here. And we can see kind of the final flow stuff. We already saw the low density structure build. And the rocket fuel is really simple. Obviously it just requires solid fuel. Just comes over outputs up the top here this is also 12 beacon a lot of 12 beacon where possible and comes over huge flow of rocket fuel and this is this is the real expensive area because <laughs> this is all of that stuff goes into here and we have seven rocket silos again i touch on this every time but if someone's maybe new and watching this video and haven't seen the others um, you need more you need an extra silo past the amount of science per minute you need to, to supply this. So basically, if they're doing 6,000 science per minute, they need seven silos because with the animation, you can't actually launch a rocket in a minute. So if you only had six, you wouldn't actually be able to do 6,000 science in a minute. Um, so you need that extra one. And it does overproduce, but that's fine. Um, and this, um, they, these would look so cool if they were like all queued up together, but that does require some circuitry stuff, um, which they do have some of actually with, with inserting. So um, they are controlling it to some degree. And then this all comes over, and I feel like it's probably the most expensive train uh, because <laughs> this is, I think, again, a 2.16.2 2 
of space science, which is ridiculous how much space science this is. Um, because all the other scientists stack in 200s, space science stacks in thousands. Um, now they maybe limit the wagons, they could have limited the wagons um, to make it hold like an equal amount of the others. If they didn't, this is just a mind blowing amount of space science. If they just left the wagons uncapped, um, I would be very curious. Um, so the condition they have set on this, which I imagine is the same for the others, is a full cargo wagon um, for two seconds of an activity. Now, if they cap the wagon to only a certain amount of slots, the full thing would still work. So I, I can't tell purely from that. Um, but if, it's, <laughs> if they didn't cap it and they wait till full, that is just an unbelievable amount of space science in there. Super expensive. Um, anyway, um, so this all comes up to the labs, which are in a central point. Uh, very nice kind of symmetry here with just three lines coming in three on the bottom three on the top and they all come in and drop off here um oh this one's waiting okay i was like why is everyone going the other direction no <laughs> it's waiting um and then these are of course 12 beacon as well all these labs a ton of labs here like around 120 uh and then i can't tell how long this has been sitting here obviously um so they may have capped this there's like only 5k in here um but this could have been sitting here for quite a while here we can look at this so this is 10k um and they stack science uh space science i believe stacks in thousands like 90 percent sure so they cap this to 10 slots it looks like to somewhat match up with these which hold 8,000 per wagon um and then they're just cranking out the science this is extremely expensive 415,000 for this one um if we look at bot speed um they actually haven't done these bot speed not surprising, they're not using bots, so <laughs> not much, uh, no, nothing surprising there. It's basically all mining productivity. They haven't even researched atomic bomb. One thing I did forget to mention at the start is they did turn off fighters. You can see there's no fighters to be found, which is fine. I, I don't think that's like an issue in, in, in any way. Um, you know, if you want to build a mega base, you want to build a mega base. You may not want to worry about constantly clearing biters and dealing with them. Some mega bases I reviewed had biters, and that's just an extra challenge if you want to take that on and find that fun. But a lot of people don't, and I think that's totally fine. Um, this is purely for the production side of things, which is what I find very fascinating. So there we go. I believe that's going to do it, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the review. This is just, man, this is so cool. I just, I cannot emphasize how much I like and how strong, how good it is to have these separated like rare um rare <laughs> base raw resource networks from the rest of your network because it just like if you build these properly the fact you're not having these all on a main network this basically just is foolproof with jams like unless you mess something up pretty bad on these lines everything is just going to run so then the only thing that's going to be a problem is within your builds or if you run out of resources and if you're just researching mining productivity that's basically never going to happen um so this is just like, I mean, this is smooth sailing. Like if you get your builds right and you do this, you're not going to have these train jams that randomly occur every once in a while. If you, whereas if you have like hundreds of trains all running on a main line and you can have hundreds of trains running on a main line without jams, if you do it right, it just takes a ton of planning and tweaking. Um, this is just kind of an, a really nice, I would say fairly straightforward uh, forward and simple way to do it. Um, so maybe you guys can draw some inspiration from this. Uh, I really, really like this base. Very well done. Uh, due to the many, many belt optimizations the devs have done over time fairly recently, uh, this can be fully belt based and run it easily. You know, definitely 60 UPS. We're not even that we're not that close to getting below it, at least on my computer. So, um, this would not be possible like a couple years ago. This would probably be at like 20 or 30 UPS before they did all of the optimizations. Um, so this is awesome that you can build this way now. And it looks really cool. Um, and some really, really nice use of things and tricks. I, I am, I so just as the last thing for commenters or imp, uh, when you see this, I am really curious on the, uh, what was that on? Was that on the red science or the green science with the random, yeah, here, like with this, I'm not really sure the reason for this aside from maybe the aesthetics or if it somehow makes the inserter work better than just having a belt just, a normal above ground belt, you know, just here. Um, that's my main question. And then like something else that I think is just awesome that I, I can't believe I didn't think of before is with the rails, really, really ingenious um, 
it's ingenious, but like really simple too. Um, so maybe I'm the only one who's too dumb to figure it out, uh, is the uh, filters here. Uh, this just works so well. This is just really smart. Ensuring that like an equal amount of stuff gets input here rather than trying to let the inserters decide, which is, you know, they're not going to decide very well. So um, very well done there. I had a blast looking at this. I hope you all enjoyed it. I would love to hear any questions and thoughts you have down below as always. Uh, Imp, thank you for submitting this. I really enjoyed taking a look at it. If you did enjoy everyone, a like is very much appreciated so it can help other people find the video and hopefully be inspired as well. And uh, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, uh, turn on notifications, keep up with future content like this. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.